Hey guys, welcome to another video. Today I'm going to show you guys how to get started using the Quiz and Survey Master plugin. And today we are using InstaWP to set up our WordPress environment. And this service allows you to launch a WordPress installation in under one minute. It does everything for you, such as setting up SSL. It's also disposable. So check it out, instawp.io. Okay, so from our dashboard, we want to install our plugins. So go over to plugins and click add new. And we just want to go to the search box and type in quiz and survey master. It's the first result, so just click install now. And as soon as it's done, we just want to click on activate. All right, so we have installed our plugin. So go over to the left hand side and click on QSM. All right, so this is our QSM dashboard. So we can create a new quiz or survey or edit quizzes or surveys already created. And we can also read documentation, view demos, as well as um, install themes and add ons. So over here, we have some useful links. And at the bottom, we have our new section and our change log. So let's create a quiz. So we have our themes. We have paid themes as well as our default theme. So we have not purchased any themes as yet. So we'll just use our default theme. So let's click next and let's give our quiz a name. Call it sample quiz. And for our form type, uh, we can leave it as quiz, but we can also select survey or simple form. And for our grading system, let's leave it as correct or incorrect, but it could either be points or both. So for our time limit, let's make this two minutes. Require user login, let's leave it as no. And we just want to click next. All right, so this is our add-ons page and add-ons basically extend the functionality of your plugin. So you can always purchase an add-on if you need it. Uh, if you want to view more add-ons, just click browse all add-ons, but we don't need any. So let's just click create quiz. All right. So this is our questions page, and this is where we can add a new question and we can also add a, a description to our question right here. This is our answer section. So we can add an answer here and we can also click this button to add a new answer so we can add multiple answers. And we can also add correct answer info to explain the answers to our questions. And over here, this is where we select the correct answer or answers. And over on the right hand side, we have our question type. So we have vertical multiple choice, which is what it is right now, and our answers type right here. So if we click this, we see that we can select a number of question types. And we can also select one of three answers types. We can make the question required. This is where we save our question. We also have some categories so we can add a category, a featured image, and we have our advanced options over here. This is where we create a new question and this is where we create a new page. So let's add our first question. So this will be a simple question. Let's say three plus three is equal to and let's add our answers. So let's say four, then six, then seven and three. And let's select our correct answer and make it required. Then save the question. All right, so we have added our first question. Um, so let's add another question. Let's say how many days are there in a leap year? And let's add our answers. So let's say 365, 366, 367, and uh, 300. Let's say 300. Yes. So select the correct answer, make it required, and save question. All right. So we can add another question. Um, but let us go over to the bottom and create a new page. All right, so let's add a new question to our page and let's make this a short answer question. So let's say what month 
comes after January. And let's add our answer, but we want to make this a uh, we want to change our question type to short answer. And let's add our answer. So it's February. So we just want to type this here and select correct to make this the correct answer. And click required. So let's make sure everything is OK and click save question. All right, so we have saved our questions. We have three questions right now. So we can always duplicate our questions by clicking this copy icon. And we can also move our questions around by clicking and dragging. And we can delete a question by clicking the bin icon at the top. Just click delete, click OK. And this is how we delete a question. We can make this required again and save our question. OK, so let us configure our contact options. So we want to collect some information on our users before beginning our quiz. So let's add a new field. Click the add new field button. And let's leave our field type as small open answer for our label. Let's type name and select used for name. Let's make it required. Click add new field and let's type email used for email. And let's change our field type to email. Now let's make it required and click save contact fields. All right. So moving on to the text tab, this is where we configure what message a user sees before or after a particular event. So this one says before displayed before our quiz. So we can also change this. So let's go back to our message. And we can use these allowed variables over here on the right hand side to customize our message. So if we click one, we see that it gets inserted into our message and we can also type our custom message. For example, please do not cheat. And this will be displayed before somebody takes our quiz. So if we click this customize labels button, we see that we can customize our buttons, validation messages and some more options. Uh, but we don't need to do this. So let's just um, scroll back to the top and click save text message. So moving on to our options tab, we see that we can configure some additional options. There are options that we have already configured, such as grading system. And we can also show our progress bar and configure some more options. Um, so you can actually scroll through this and select the options that you want to change. And once you're done, just make sure you click save changes. So let's move to our emails tab. And this is where you can configure the emails that a user gets when they complete your quiz or survey. So up here we have our email variable. And basically what this means is this email will be sent to whatever email address the user entered before beginning our quiz or survey. And if we look at the bottom, we have our email subject. And it says quiz results for quiz underscore name. So this variable right here is mapped to the name of our quiz. So next we have our email content and this is where we configure what a user sees in the body of the email. So we have our questions and answers provided uh, from our quiz or survey. So over here we have our conditions. So without any condition set, this email will always be sent. So if we click additional conditions, the email will be sent once our condition is fulfilled. So basically we can configure these settings to send this email when the correct score percentage is greater than or equal to 50. So basically this is when this email will be sent, but let's just remove this condition and we can also add a new email so you can have multiple emails being sent at a given point in time. So, you can configure this according to your needs. So click save emails and let's move to our results pages. So this is similar to our emails page, except this is being shown at the end of the quiz on the website. So it says, thank you for submitting your response. You can edit this message on the results pages tab. So let's just delete this. So once we have completed our quiz, we will see our contact information as well as our questions and answers. So moving on to the left hand side, we can also configure our additional conditions. 
So without any conditions, this email will always be sent. But if we configure our conditions, if our correct score percentage is equal to 100, then we will see a message saying you are a genius. And we can also insert a template variable to customize our message by clicking this button and selecting a variable from this list. So let's save our results pages and let's move back to our email. So we can also use a template variable to customize our emails and let's move to our style tab. So this is where we can configure the appearance of our quizzes or surveys, but we only have our default theme. If we had selected or purchased additional themes, um, we could have changed this right here. So click custom CSS. And this is where you can add some custom CSS code to further customize your quizzes or surveys. So clicking CSS in QSM takes you to a documentation page that basically provides a guide that you can use when writing your CSS code. And clicking this legacy link will take you to some basic styling options. And once we're done, all we want to do is click this preview button to preview our quiz or survey. So we have our contact information. And as you can see, we have this pink background around our questions. And this is there only because we are previewing required questions. So our actual quiz will not show this pink highlight. And as you can see, we have our progress bar at the bottom and we have been moving between our pages. So once we are done taking our quiz, we just want to make sure that everything is OK and move back to our dashboard. And right now we just want to publish our quiz. All right, so let us go to our quizzes and surveys to insert this quiz into a page or post. So we just want to click, we just want to hover over QSM and click quizzes or surveys. We just want to find our short code, but we can also edit or delete or duplicate this quiz, but let's copy our short code. So click the copy button and create a new post add a title called this our quiz and at the bottom we just want to click this plus icon and type short code we already have it but this is how you would get it type short code in the search box and click the short code icon then paste our short code in here and click publish publish again view post and this is our quiz so now you know how to get started using the quiz and survey master plugin. Thank you guys so much for watching.